Michael Gove is quoting from the OECD's Program for International Student Assessment, known as PISA, which examines and ranks education systems. The UK is ranked 15th, whilst the Canadian province of Alberta comes out top of any English-speaking region. The new Education Secretary puts Alberta's success down to competition between schools, parental choice and autonomy for head teachers. In Canada, each province has responsibility for its own education system. Alberta, known as the Texas of Canada, is an oil, gas and grain producing province, covering an area three times the size of Britain with a population of nearly four million. This film will examine the role which autonomy, choice and competition play in Alberta's education system. One of the things that we looked at last year was doing a survey with our kids and, and one of the things they indicated... Head teachers in Edmonton, Alberta, so get together every month to discuss and share ideas. They're a tight-knit and supportive group, as are their colleagues in junior high and elementary schools. What binds them together is a pride in and commitment to state education. We're public schools that offer choice. Right, and not just choice between buildings, but inside of buildings, yeah. amongst programs. So I, all of us here run uh, schools within schools. We're as good as anyone else, and we're probably better than many. So if you want to come in as a private school, please come in, and we'll compete with you and blow you out of the water, because we believe we can deliver higher-end programming than any particular private organization. And so we welcome charters, schools. Uh, we'll just build an, a school beside them and put them out of business. And we'll, be yeah. better than them. and we'll be better than them because we've got the resources. In the 1980s, the province underwent a transfer of responsibility for the management of schools from district to school level. The level of autonomy, site-based decision-making, as we call it, within our district, is, is really a management system. It's a way of how we allocate resources out to school. It is simply an operational management process. And that by itself has very little impact on actual achievement results. Within the province, education is managed by 62 districts, which hand out the funds and which can range in size from rural areas containing a handful of schools to citywide districts like Edmonton, with over 200. Jean Stiles runs Edmonton's largest school. This is a huge school. It's the biggest school in Edmonton. Uh, Numbers-wise, 2,400 2, students, uh, 125 teachers, 180 staff. Let's just meet Carol first, mm -hmm. who's our business manager. This is my counterpart. Carol Gibson. Hi, here. Hi, here. So, Carol, do you want to talk about what you are responsible for? Um, everything she's not. <laughs> that's true. Well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, I, I handle financials. Um, am responsible for making sure that we're on budget, um, custodial, the building. What is our budget about? Seventeen million. Yeah. It's and about we have. Million. We know that that's about ninety cents on the dollar that's coming to the school. So when you look at that as a system, I, that's how I roughly think about it. It's about 90 cents on the dollar that comes to the school, 10% that's kept, you know, centrally. Centrally means kept by the district for services like architecture, building, research, planning, training, which schools can buy into. Your vast majority of your money goes into staff costs. So we budget about... 80, 83, 84% we're thinking is, is, is in staff costs. Yeah. That's everybody from teacher support to custodial. We never see what are the actual costs are. We're given a cost per teacher, and it averages out over the district. So uh, I think our cost this year is about 85000 per teacher. 
Four. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that means whether you've got a senior teacher or a brand new teacher, you're paying the same cost. Whether it's my school or someone else's school, what we've done is we've said, this is how much it costs over the district to have a teacher. And so yearly we're given what the teacher cost will be. And that really works yeah. as an equitable way to say, this is what you can budget on. So we don't actually look at, we could have the most senior staff in the district or the most junior staff in the district, we pay the same. Most children in Alberta attend their local school. But in the urban area within Edmonton district, about half of all students now choose to attend a school outside of their neighborhood, if places are available after local children have been catered for. These can be faith schools or schools which offer a specialist program. So whatever the program, all students are expected to complete the provincial curriculum. Here at Pollard Meadows, these kindergarten pupils are following the mainstream curriculum. So is big a good word for this pumpkin? I think you're right. You know what? I have the word big. Here it is. Can you tell me, Avnit, the letters? What? B. I. And G, good job. That is our big pumpkin. Whilst other pupils in the same school and in the same year are taught the Cogito program. We're going to learn the letter M. And what does that Cogito, Latin for I reason. While following the provincial curriculum involves a more traditional teaching style. We go back up curve around our middle dotted line to our bottom baseline. In the province at that time, there was a demand by a lot of parent groups and a lot of lobbyists that they wanted more choice. They wanted to have more involvement in their schools than ever before. And this, I think, was coming out in terms of, of uh, can't we have our own schools the way we want our schools? And that got the label, obviously, of charter schools. And so the government at that time, was reducing, if I remember correctly, the amount of money that was going to go to public education by something like 12.5%, which is a significant cut. And at the same time, was going to raise the amount of money that they would contribute to charter schools or to private schools. And they were going to bring it up to at least uh, 60%. Lemonade. Lemonade. What sound does it begin with? I went out and I met with as many parent groups as many administrators, as many teachers, as many business people as I could find in organized groups. And we met on an ongoing basis. And what we were talking about is, you know, what do you want from your, from your school? What is it that you really want from, from your public school system? I found the pumpkin. We invited parents to come forward and said, if you want a school that focuses in the arts, okay, fine. What would that look like? And we had those discussions with them. And on the basis of that, we started establishing uh, choice schools within the public system, within our system. And we're saying, you don't have to go to private school. You don't have to pay this additional tuition. You don't have to do those kinds of things. You can receive that kind of school, and you can be part of the development of that school within the public system. Esker. We have often located our schools of choice in low-income neighborhoods. So we even have tried to revitalize low-income neighborhoods by putting schools of choice there. E, that's an E for elephant. Tell me what the picture is. Fish. A f -f fish. That's you can right. organize school choice so that it benefits only the middle class and above. Or you can design a choice system that benefits all children. The population of students was going down. Those schools often didn't get their renovations and those kinds of things that maybe some of the other newer schools did. And so this way, we said, well, we got space. If you want uh, an art school, if you want it, uh, here it is. Come on in and get it. Pupils in all the mainstream areas are taught in mixed ability classes with a strong emphasis on differentiation. Actually, the groupings that they're set up, and it doesn't matter which ones, it's the symbols on the paper. 
that we use for the differentiation so that there's no difference. They don't notice that. So they're all working from the same paper. Exactly. The paper's got differentiated tests on it. Correct. Yeah, and based on a symbol for this instance. Why do you keep them mixed up? rather than putting them in the top table, middle table, second table? It's just easier. They can learn from one another. They each have strengths and weaknesses, depending on what we're doing, and they can see from each other. So those that are finished on the easier tasks can look ahead to the next task, and they might challenge that themselves. So it's there. I don't need to be there. I don't need to teach it for them. No, 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 no. Not 20. 20, 20, 30, 20. It's, it's increasing, not increasing, decreasing. Do it again. I wanted to be uh, one step ahead um, in the program, and I felt it was a better education system for her, and um, especially with the homework she's getting. It's getting her to be more advanced at different levels. Now, if you didn't have that choice, if you just came into mainstream, would you be happy? No, I wouldn't be happy. Because she was in a Montessori school, uh, play school before, and I could have put her into a community one, but I wanted her to have a better education, so I put her into a Montessori school uh, for her because that was more like advanced learning, and I didn't want her to go to play school or community school. So that's why um, I'm happy with choice. We were thinking of sending the older one to Kogito. The only thing that put me off is the fact that they don't get to celebrate things like Halloween and all the fun stuff and go out on field trips and things like that. That's the only thing, and I don't. And I think that he's so, still so young that it's like it's not fair, you know. For the man who runs Edmonton schools, site-based decision making, translated in the UK as being autonomy for heads, and choice between different teaching styles are not in themselves like the reasons for student achievement. What does have an impact is when people organize in ways that that are fundamentally about students learning, student learning, and, uh, and ways of engaging students more effectively, that's when we, got, we begin to see some interesting and creative ways, uh, that new levels of engagement that happen between teachers and students. School choice programs are many and varied. They range from languages to the International Baccalaureate, ballet, specialisms in the arts, or certain trades. Everyone's taking the same curricular outcomes. That's, that's a requirement and a given in the system. So now we're talking about what in addition are we providing to children and to students. One of the things that I think that's really important is that children are engaged. They are excited about learning. They're finding their passions. They're having an opportunity to develop those passions. I want teachers to have those same options as well. And so by providing a variety of different kinds of uh, programming options within the system, we find ways to keep parents and students and teachers engaged and passionate about what it is that they're doing. Jasper Place offers more programs than any other school in Edmonton. It's Friday and uh, you'll notice they're coming in and getting ready for class. Some kids will already be in class with block zero and that's a course and a class time that we put in for students that want more flexibility in their day. How does that work? And so they can opt in for that and teachers can opt in for that. Um, it's to build programming that would give them more flexibility. Watch out for the kids here. You can see the span of programming and what's at students' fingertips here and really how well they are accommodated on a program sense. Here's a grade 10 Cosmo class. I don't want any student to have to suffer through school. I want them to enjoy the experience, to find something more about themselves in the process, and to better enable them to feel forward about, feel good and positive about supporting the education system when they're raising children themselves. That's an important attribute. And of course, it helps them capture that whole concept of the fact that if you are motivated yourself in what you're doing, and you're motivated in the program, and you bring something to that classroom that helps your, your peers inside of that classroom learn, Everyone has a better environment within which to work. It's a much more positive place to be. What do you want to do when you leave school? Uh, become a psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> you think this is a bit of a waste of time? Well, no, not really. I'd rather have fun than study like mad and end up killing myself before I get to university. You're doing this course, this option. What do you think you're getting from it? Um. 
I mostly just did, I did Cosmo 10 because I thought it would be easy credits and then I just enjoyed it so much that I decided to go on to Cosmo 20 and I'm not very social so it's a good way to be around lots of people and get to have new friends. But not really gaining anything academic from it <laughs> in my case. Are you enjoying it? Yes, greatly. We want to make sure that there's a nice mix of students in our options. Very, very few of them you would see that are sort and select. These are options where we want all of our kids to be alongside one another, builds the culture of our school. How does that work for those girls? Do they have to pass out with their academic curriculum the same as other Absolutely. kids? Absolutely. They still have to have the mandated curriculum for a high school diploma, so they still have to have academics. This is in, this is the extra piece to it. Although it was clear that parents and students valued the increased choice, it inevitably encouraged competition. The current district superintendent, a former Edmonton principal himself, has been determined to change that. We had a lot of internal competition for students because funding follows students and we would be looking for ways of boosting our enrollment and so we would be doing a lot of advertising in the community. And what we came to realize was that we were really truly competing against ourselves. I felt we needed to talk and put it on the table to say, so how is this working for you to advertise your school? and to invest all of this money in relation to and, and try to get, gain your students. And who's gaining from this, really? And there was, a, a, in a sense, a collective sigh of relief. And we were able to really talk through what motivates us to do that, because we were always concerned about enrollment. Good morning, Edmonton Public Schools. It's taken years, but we know our superintendent had once said, I want them lining up at your doors. Mm -hmm. Well, if they're lining up at, at Mary's door, that means they might not be lining up at my door. So you and start I, looking at each other a little differently. Yeah, and, and so one of the things I, I believe, again, it's, as part of um, you know conversations that we've had, is that we said, no, we, we don't want the competition. We want collaboration. We want all of it. Again, part of that ownership of they're all our kids. Now you're the you. We get to focus on the product, the student, and all of the things that go into the, the the making of the student. So the choice of the teachers, bringing in consultants, how we collaborate, the kind of conversations, how we involve parents. Those are all of the really good things. I'd rather not have a lot of conversations about boilers, and 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 PR and all of those kinds of things. There's a purpose for them, I understand, but I see my work more in line, and I think this is one of the big things with our district in particular, that we're still seen as teachers. The site base has changed that way because initially we did everything, and it was huge, and now the district has realized that there are some things we don't want, and that's why we have the management plan and you can buy into, and economy of scale. Yeah. So we don't all need to do everything, and it's brought back the instructional leader into the principal role, which is good. Once a, we used to have yeah. tenure principals to schools, right? And assistant principals, that them, and, and you couldn't get rid of them until they decided. <laughs> we right? still have one, don't we? No, just kidding. <laughs> 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 so how but, long is your tenure in school? There's no, there isn't. No, it, is it. No, could be a, it could be a year. A year. Yeah. It could You're be a several years. Before they shift you somewhere else. They could, yeah. whatever. You're tenured where? to the principalship, and but you are district. not tenured to the school. To the district, yeah. 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 And so that's why the decision, and, and I think that's the powerful that's part. The, yeah. Again, part of that accountability. So when an appointment comes, I have full confidence that, and they even share with you why you are going where you're going. Yeah. So you I feel very you much, you yeah, you're involved with where you are sent to. You're not just placed. You are sent there and you understand that's why. Right. I yeah. agree with you completely yeah. that yeah. I'm... I'm known for the skill set, but also mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. You have an assistant superintendent. You have one. You have one. We all have one. And I think even the conversations that they have amongst each other about where is the hole, how are we going to fill it, they know their schools, they know the population, they know the challenges, they know the, the positive. We've been able to, to change the rhetoric to less of competition, and we are actually in this together, to one more of, of cooperation and collaboration. And I think we're still learning how to do that work, because that's challenging to, to move from that competitive uh, m model. And, and, and ultimately, who are we competing against? 